Hi YouTubers and you're watching um, Manners 358's channel and today we're actually going to talk about air literally and what I'm really talking about is oxygen and its, its importance to your um, tank. Uh, to start off with um, it's said that uh, fish breathe um, water and they breathe it through the gills. Well yeah they breathe water but that's kind of, kind of half true and I'm actually going to show you why. So watch my Pleco, um, a bottom dweller, not known to go to the surface at all. It's kind of shy. There. What you just witnessed is a fish taking a gulp of air. Um, many other fish do this. Um, to name a few, uh, one is my Giardini, or a lot of the Arowanas, they do that for some um, particular reason when they think that um, they're short on breath they'll um, t uh, swim up to the surface and take a gob of air bronze quarries also do this as well Siamese fighters and Grammys have a hole in their head on top of their head and they breathe through that when there's stagnant water but not all fish take air directly at the surface. Other fish like uh, goldfish, cichlids and so forth actually take um, oxygen through more traditional methods and that's straight through the water um, dissolved in it. So basically air is important to fish so the next question to ask is how does the oxygen get into uh, water in the first place? Well, it's more simple it sounds, but um, to a lot of people, I included, um, we really un underestimate its value of how it, it gets uh, done. Oxygen mixes with water at the surface when they're both in direct contact with each other. And there's um, three main methods it gets into the tank. The first one is um, to use uh, a bubbler or bubbles. And contrary to popular belief, bubbles don't actually don't, don't give much uh, oxygen to water. It's when they um, rise to the surface and they break up, creating a ripple effect, uh, disrupting the surface of the water. Those ripples actually create the um, uh, movement necessary in the water to exchange the gases and oxygen. And notice that I said movement. Well, to create movement more effectively, um, it's probably better to use pumps, and what I mean is water pumps. And water pumps can be used by themselves, or probably more better with canisters or hobs. And what you do with those is uh, direct the, um, the outlets towards the surface of the water, creating the ripples you need and the movement you need to exchange oxygen with the water and and get rid of the uh, CO2 as well and this is all done um, without us being uh, seeing it most of the time it's done at a microscopic level invisible to the naked eye if water is stagnant fish will take um, air at the surface they'll do this like the pleak shown before or um, if, if they can't take air directly um, they will actually um, just breathe heavily at the surface of the water because that's where most of the oxygen is. The third way um, uh, water gets the oxygen is actually from the plants in the tank if you happen to have any and um, they do that when they um, grow and photosynthesize and um, at the same time they're actually taking CO2 as well um, so that's it. Just one last thing. Um, heat actually affects the uh, saturation level ox of oxygen in the water. So uh, at high heat there's less oxygen in the water. At lower um, temperatures um, more oxygen gets actually gets uh, dissolved. Um, larger fish will be more affected at higher heat because um, they require more oxygen. So you need to um, dissipate the water more, effect uh, more effectively 
by creating more ripples or the frequency of the ripples so to say um, and lowering uh, the temperature will also help um, increase the um, saturation of the oxygen well that's it I hope you liked it um, and uh, and just uh, subscribe for more videos as well thank you